morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. My name is Ben Fuchs. I'm a nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side. Helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to source. We want to help you. We want to help you change your life and help you change the life, the lives of loved ones and friends and family members and workmates as well. Get your friends and family off of their prescription drugs and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Doc Wallach and all the folks at Longevity. We can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or medications or something you may have heard about or skincare, skincare ingredients, we're here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side today and every day. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or if you want to purchase... The Truth Treatment products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com or you can head over to brightsideben.com to purchase longevity products. You can also check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, and my new blog, criticalhealthnews.com, that I'm doing with George Norrie, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. We post regularly and we uh, have news stories as well as blog posts on both websites pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team, the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Order products directly from the phone. Um, from the phone team, you can also, of course, join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $10 fee by calling the phone team 866-735-2470. Okay. A little bit more about skin care and skin health in general. We're talking, uh, last program we talked about skin moisturization. Dry skin, as it turns out, is much more significant than most people realize. It's not just a topical issue if you have dry skin. This is, by the way, this is the case with pretty much all skin issues. If you have eczema, you got an internal problem. If you got a psoriasis, you got an internal problem. If you got acne, you got an internal problem. These are all diseases health issues that manifest, that show up on the skin, but that doesn't mean the problem's on the skin. Just because it shows up on the skin doesn't mean that's where the problem is. In fact, it's never, or rarely anyway, uh, a skin problem per se. It's very rarely, no matter what your skin health condition is, it's very rare that it's caused by something that you're doing topically, which means you're not gonna be able to reverse the problem by putting something on topically. Where do dermatologists work? Topically. Why is dermatology silly? Because all it does is address the topical symptomology. In the case of dry skin, which is an epidemic, whenever I do a talk, I will invariably ask people to raise their hands if they have dry skin. And you know what? Almost everybody, and I'm talking 99% of people, uh, that aren't teenagers or kids, and even teenagers or, or kids suffer from dry skin, but almost 99% of adults, in my, uh, uh, based on my, my observations, have dry skin. And dry skin should never happen. Human skin is not supposed to be dry. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that we got some big problems inside the body. The body is so forgiving and the skin is so forgiving that we don't necessarily notice these issues. And all we can, all we'll sometimes notice is little symptoms like skin dryness or flakiness or uh, African Americans call it ashiness. These are all skin health issues that are harbingers or indicators that something's wrong inside the body. In the case of dry skin, which should never occur and almost always does, 
what is most likely happening is fats and fatty vitamins, essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, and fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K, are either not present in the diet, not being supplemented with, or they're not being absorbed. Either you're not getting your vitamins and essential fatty acids, or you're not absorbing them, or a combination thereof. It's got nothing to do with your moisturizing cream. And you're not going to get rid of it by using a fancier moisturizing cream, no matter what the very kind lady at the department store may tell you. Dry skin means something's wrong inside the body. It usually involves a lack of absorption or a lack of intake of essential fatty acids and fatty vitamins. And this means that if you have dry skin, you're going to be at higher risks for other degenerative diseases. Dry skin is your friend in the sense that it's an announcement that you're at risk for all kinds of other diseases, including autoimmune diseases, including heart disease, including, God forbid, cancer. All of these are, uh, are subsequent, uh, follow dry skin and dry skin symptomology. And what do most of us do when we have dry skin? We put a moisturizer on. Now, we're going to be talking here about the absolute silliness and counterproductive nature of using, a dry, of using a moisturizer for dry skin, of covering the skin up with wax and oil, not to mention emulsifiers and preservatives and fragrances. We'll be talking about how that's counterproductive in a little bit. But for now, I want to point out that because skin dryness is an internal condition, skin dryness is an internal condition. There's very little you can do to change skin dryness to skin softness or skin hydration with a moisturizing cream. In fact, the scamminess of the skincare business, and I've been in it for 30 years, and it is scammy. I don't blame people for being skeptical about skincare because it's a scammy business. I was just at the trade show, the ingredient trade show, annual ingredient trade show uh, last week in New Jersey where you see all the latest and greatest skincare ingredients. There is no latest and greatest skincare ingredients. They're all the same silliness, and none of it, very little of it works, with the exception of topical vitamins. And because you can't patent topical vitamins, nobody really even wants to talk about them. In any case, the scamminess of the skincare business is on par with the scamminess of the drug industry. And it's no coincidence that both, uh, no coincidence that both of these businesses, the skincare business and the drug business, started and became mature and they developed in the early part of the 20th century. Along with, side by side with advertising, side by side with marketing, side by side with mass, control, mass mind control techniques. All of this was pioneered in the early part of the 20th century. The drug business, the, uh, the Helena Rubinstein skincare business. I'm not picking on Helena Rubinstein, but the standard way we treat skincare, we treat the skin. It all developed alongside, side by side with the marketing business, the uh, um, control, mind control business. And by the way, the food processing business grew up at the same time too. So you got the trifecta, you got the food processing business, you got the drug industry, and you got the skincare industry all growing up, maturing, becoming humongous trillion dollar entities if you add them all together. Do you know the drug business is a $1.5 trillion business in this country alone? All of these businesses, food processing, drugs, pharmacy, and uh, and skincare all grew up in the early part of the 20th century as we started to figure out how the mind worked and how to control the masses, how to control large groups of people to get them to do, to do our bidding. And it should come as no surprise to anybody who understands history that the Nazis and the, uh, in Germany in the, early 1920, in the late 1920s and early 1930s were especially fond of these techniques. Not that I'm linking Nazis to doctors and the skin business. Although Dr. Wallach sometimes does that. Anyway, for years, and even to this day, the iconic topical treatment for dry skin, doctor recommended, no less, was a kerosene-derived substance called Vaseline. Everybody's heard of Vaseline. Vaseline was derived from kerosene, invented in the late 19th century, way before we knew anything about the skin, way before we knew anything about the substructures in the skin and the layers of the skin, and way before we knew anything about vitamins and food nutrients and their importance for the health of the body and for the health of the skin. The guy who first brought Vaseline to the marketplace was a guy named Robert Cheeseboro. Yes, as in Cheeseboro Ponds. He was an oil chemist. He specialized in extracting fractions of oil and, from, uh, and kerosene from fossil fuels. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. 
24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the websites. You can also join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Our number today, and we do have lines open for you if you try to call in and gotten that dreaded busy signal or if we've left you on hold in the past, we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about eczema, psoriasis, acne, skincare, skincare ingredients, skincare products, nutritional uh, nutrients or nutritional supplements, we're here for you, 844-236-6010. Likewise, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that too, 844-236-6010. If you have dry skin, and most people do, you got an internal health condition. Now, it may seem like, you know, superficial and cosmetic and you don't need to really concern yourself about it. And really, if you don't care, you don't care. But keep in mind, if you have dry skin, like if you have eczema or if you have psoriasis or if you have, or if you have acne, you're running higher risks for other disease states. And this is so important. Dry skin and skin conditions are harbingers. They're portals. They're announcements that something is percolating, something bad is percolating, and it usually involves nutritional deficiencies, at least in the case of dry skin. Deficiencies in vitamin A, deficiencies in vitamin E, deficiencies in vitamin D and K, your fatty vitamins, as well as deficiencies in omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. By the way, there's no omega-3 fatty acids in the skin per se, or, or to any great degree. Most skin, uh, most, uh, mostly uh, skin fats are omega-6 essential fatty acids. That's why I made my omega-6 healing cream, by the way, to help replace those omega-6s. And oh, by the way, do you know cholesterol plays a very, very important role in keeping the skin healthy and moist and soft? And statin drugs, just yesterday, actually, statin drug, uh, a U.S. pharmacist published an article about statin drugs causing diabetes. You know, 87%. Uh, you have an 87% higher, risks, uh, higher risk of getting diabetes if you are on a statin drug. As far as the skin goes, statin drugs, because they suppress cholesterol, can also cause dry skin. Cholesterol is a precursor. It gets turned into skin moisturizing factors. Yet another reason to eat your eggs and your cholesterol-containing foods. If you have dry skin, no doubt you've tried or at least heard about using Vaseline. Vaseline is, was for a long time, not so much anymore, but for a long time, it was the, the major treatment for dry skin. Doctors would recommend Vaseline for dry skin. Doctors would recommend Vaseline for burnt skin. Doctors would recommend Vaseline for almost anything on the skin. Vaseline was invented by an oil chemist named Robert Cheeseboro in the late 19th century, 1860 or 1870. Robert Cheeseboro was an oil chemist. He specialized in extracting kerosene from whale oil. Later on, he started to work with petroleum, with fossil fuel. As the story goes, Robert Cheeseboro, young scientist and entrepreneur, during a visit to an oil well in Pennsylvania, he noticed that, an, that uh, oil workers were smearing their skin with this gooey substance that was accumulating on the machinery. They called it rod wax. And they were smearing this gooey rod wax kind of oily substance on their skin. And they found that it had a healing property that was softening for the skin. Keep, keep in mind, nobody really knew anything about moisturizers in 1860 and 1870 and 1880. Nobody even really knew anything about the skin. Anyway, Cheeseboro, being the scientist and the lab rat and entrepreneur that he was, got curious. He took some of this rod wax home and he started experimenting with it. After months of testing, he managed to successfully extract something he called petroleum jelly out of this rod wax substance. And by the late 19th century, by 1890 or so, Cheeseboro was marketing his petroleum jelly product under the name Vaseline. Vaseline means water oil, Wasa Olin. Wasa is German for water, Olin for oil. And he called his substance Vaseline water oil, which refers to the fact that that this stuff had a water trapping property, Vasa water, Olin oil. And anyway, the story is that Vaseline was so named, was named because it had an ability to trap water. Within 10 years, Vaseline, which was the first topical skin moisturizing product was found in almost every household in America. And of course, uh, while Vaseline may have been the state of the art skincare in 1870, because it's so cheap, it's an oil industry waste product. It's used to this day by Ignorant, unfortunately, ignorant skincare professionals who've been entranced into believing that moisturization means smearing something on the skin 
oily, some oily substance on the skin. Today, we don't use Vaseline as much, but we use similar kinds of substances. Skin moisturization is, for the most part, not a topical issue, but a nutritional issue. You, want, you don't want to, get ri- you want to get rid of your dry skin? Is your dry skin uncomfortable? You don't like the way it looks? You don't like the way it feels? Think top, th- topical vitamins. Think internal vitamins. Think digestion. Is this, should come as, this should come as no surprise to anybody who's listened to this program. We talk about this all the time. Dry skin has a lot in common with Alzheimer's disease. Dry skin has a lot in common with autoimmune disease. Dry skin has a lot in common with any health condition. Nutritional, digestive, blood sugar, and oxygen. And oh, by the way, it turns out that there's a major relationship between oxygen or the lack thereof in skin disease. We'll be talking about that in the coming days. Topical vitamins can be super useful. In the case of vitamin C, which we spent a lot of time talking about, we'll continue to spend a lot of time talking about. Vitamin C encourages the development and the growth of skin cells. Technically, these things are called keratinocytes. Skin cells are called keratinocytes because they're cells that make keratin. Cyte, C-Y-T means cell, keratin cells. Vitamin C encourages the development and the growth of skin cells. And that's topically as well as internally. That means if you have eczema or you have any kind of disruption in the surface of the skin, that's what eczema is. It's a, a barrier disruption issue. Think topical vitamin C, especially in its fatty form. We'll tell you about that here in a minute. Vitamin C plays a key role in helping skin cells grow correctly on the surface of the skin. And what's more, vitamin C also plays a key role in stimulating the production of skin fats, so-called skin lipids. These are the true skin moisturizers, divine skin moisturizers, the real skin moisturizers. These are substances that are produced in the skin itself, and vitamin C increases or upregulates their production internally as well as topically. You could do a heck of a lot of stuff by put, heck, you could get a heck of a lot of benefit by putting vitamins on top of the skin. You know, the skin is an organ of last resort for nutritional deficiencies, or for nutrition, I should say. That is, if your heart is deficient in vitamin C, your liver is deficient in vitamin C, your bones are deficient in vitamin C, your lungs are deficient in vitamin C, when you take your supplements or you eat your vitamin C containing food, That's where the vitamin C is going to go. It's going to go to the heart. It's going to go to the liver. It's going to go to the bones. And it's going to go to the skin last. And this is where topical vitamins can play such an important role in keeping your skin healthy. The body doesn't really care about the skin as much as it cares about the liver and the lungs and the spleen. That makes sense. These are these internal, the internal viscera, the internal organs. That's where the body is going to put most of the nutrients that you get internally, especially if you're deficient. By putting vitamin C on top of your skin, you can bypass this kind of shunting effect, this redirecting of vitamin C to the visceral organs, to the internal organs. This is why topical vitamins are so important. Yeah, you can use Vaseline and other waxy, oily substances found in your typical cheapo moisturizing products. They'll simulate, they'll imitate moisturization. But why simulate moisturization when you can stimulate moisturization using topical vitamins? Vitamin C, for one. There's so much about vitamin C in the skin. For wrinkles, for anti-aging, for moisturization, for dark spots, for acne, for inflammation. We'll be spending a lot of time. We're back on the bright side. Got lines open for you. Hang tight. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. If you're on hold, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products, head over to my website, brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you're interested in purchasing any of my new Truth Treatment products, you can head over to Truth Treatments at... Uh, I'm sorry, head over to uh, truthtreatments.com. Truth Treatments, one word, uh, all little letters, truthtreatments.com. You can order products right off the website, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Oklahoma. Welcome, David, to the Bright Side. What's up, David? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, What's going on? Actually, I had two questions, but I'll, I'll ask this first question. Sure, we I got we got lines open. Ago, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, I I read some years ago that castor oil was used for a skin condition. What can you tell me about that? Oh yeah, castor oil is awesome stuff. You ever hear of Edgar Casey? By the way, do you know who Edgar no. Casey was? 
They call him the sleeping prophet, Google Edgar Casey, C-A-Y-C-E, I think he spells his name. Edgar Casey was, uh, he called him the sleeping prophet. He used to lie down uh, on a couch and give people psychic readings back in the 1920s and 1930s before anybody really knew what psychic readings were. And he used to talk a lot about, he used to talk a lot about using castor oil for healing. And to this day, castor oil is considered to be one of the, uh, one of the more important alternative medicinal oils uh, for, for skin conditions as well as for internal conditions. And there's some really interesting uh, features to castor oil, uh, which is actually a big time industrial oil. It's used as a lubricant in uh, industry and it's used in, uh, it's used for its electrical, uh, has a certain electrical quality. All of this has to do with the fact that castor oil is unique among vegetable oils in the sense that it has a certain kind of water solubility. You know, there's a very important mm -hmm. polarity or distinction, I should say, between water soluble and fat soluble. We've talked about that a lot. Does that make sense? Water soluble versus fat soluble. You know what I mean when I say that? Something's yes. right. Mm -hmm. Well, so obviously oils are going to be oil soluble. Obviously, They're, they dissolve in oil, but castor oil actually has has some water soluble properties and that makes it interesting in the world of oils in fact that's why castor oil has got so much skin benefit and also drug benefit in the sense that it can be used to increase the penetration of topical med topical medicines through the skin so that you can use castor oil as a transdermal enhancer if you are trying to get um, trying to get uh, nutritional substances like vitamin C for example or vitamin A or if you're trying to get uh, hormones like estrogen or DHEA or progesterone into the deeper levels of the skin or even into the blood, mm -hmm. if you put a little castor oil on your skin first, the drugs, the, the DHEA, the progesterone, the estrogen, or the vitamin C, whatever it is uh, that you're using, will get will penetrate deeper into the skin if it, there's a little layer of castor oil on the skin first. Or if you mix the castor oil in with your progesterone or your DHEA. In fact, you can make your own progesterone transdermal topical product by getting some progesterone powder from a drugstore, from a pharmacy, and then mixing it in with a little castor Castor oil. Now you'll have to use some heat. Progesterone doesn't really go into castor oil very effectively, but some will go in there and you'll get some transdermal penetration. The same penetrating property that castor oil has can be used for, for uh, back pain, for example, or as a massage product. And castor oil does make a nice massage product. Interestingly, the component in castor oil that imparts this water solubility is a substance called ricin oleic acid. And this uh, R-I-C-I-N, ricin, the ricin oleic acid, uh, the ricin mm -hmm. component of ricin oleic acid is known as one of the most toxic substances in, in, toxic substances there is. In fact, the CIA is uh, uh, stereotypically will put a little touch of ricin on an umbrella tip, and at least this is what the, this is what the, uh, the mytho how the mythology goes, a little touch of ricin on an umbrella tip, if you get touched with that umbrella tip, it'll kill you. Ricin is super, super toxic. Now, this accounts for some of the toxicity associated with castor oil, and castor oil does have a certain amount of toxicity associated with it, certainly more toxicity than, uh, than other oils, and that's because of the ricin. The castor seed contains ricin. Remember, seeds don't want to be eaten, so seeds will mm -hmm. contain toxic elements. Elements. We've talked about phytoestrogens as a toxic element. We've talked about coumarins, blood thinners as a toxic element that are found in seeds. Uh, gluten is a toxic element that's found in seeds. And ricin is also a toxic element. It's a protein that's found in seeds. Uh, it's found in the castor seeds specifically. So mm -hmm. castor oil will typically have the, the ricin extracted out, but tiny little traces of ricin can still exist in castor oil. And this is one of the reasons why castor oil is not really used a lot in the world of skincare. Castor oil also has a little uh -huh. kind of off smell, kind of, an, kind of an unpleasant odor associated with it. Uh, castor oil is sometimes used to induce uh, nausea and vomiting for this reason. Castor oil is also used to treat constipation for this reason. The body will want to expel castor oil so uh, it can be it can uh induce some vomiting as the body tries to, to get rid of the castor oil or induce diarrhea as the body tries to in, uh, get rid of the castor oil. So if you are constipated, a teaspoon of castor oil may help uh, induce, di uh, induce a, a bowel movement. Too much will cause diarrhea. And also it's uh, sometimes used to induce pregnancy. 
um, although that's more of a, it's not necessarily a scientific treatment, but it's the same idea when the body gets castor oil in it because of the toxicity, the very slight toxicity associated with castor oil, the body will try to expel things out of the system. And this is one of the reasons why it's been used, uh, not in a scientific or in a therapeutic or in a medicinal way, but by midwives and throughout history to induce pregnancy, also as a, uh, uh, to treat constipation and also to induce vomiting. Does that help you? Yes, yes, you did, you did, you did help me. Um, the other question I had was, I don't know how much you know about this one here, hydrogen peroxide being used intravenously yeah. through the veins. Yeah, I have heard of uh, uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen peroxide is also interesting stuff. Do, have you, do you use hydrogen peroxide at all as a mouthwash? Have you ever exper experimented with it? I've used uh, hydrogen peroxide on my uh, dogs. When they had illnesses, certain illnesses, and it's and it's and it's work. It's actually worked better than bring, than uh, bringing the dogs to the vet. What did you do? How did that how did was, you um, how did you use well, it? Well, uh, the 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 dog had a severe uh, diarrhea problem, and I went ahead and used it in their in their water in their drinking water. And huh. uh, there was uh, there was another situation I had where the dog was breaking out with like uh, the skin would break out like with pus and the skin would crack and it would spread over the dog's body and I used that also on the dog's skin and it cleared the dog up within within a week's time the dog was fine that's and, interesting uh, a person a person that I knew had taken his dog he had spent over fifteen hundred dollars taking his dog to the vet uh, with the same particular uh, skin problem and the dog had even lost uh, lost a limb, and the dog ended up dying. But I didn't know about that In uh, by the time I heard about it, the dog already had been dead. So, I mean, another thing, too, is that when you use it on the dog's skin, you know that the uh, hair color changes? Yeah, it's a bleaching agent. Peroxides are bleaching agents. Women will use peroxides in their hair to make their hair blonde. Uh, benzyl peroxide used for acne. If you ever get benzyl peroxide on, on a, 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 a like your a t-shirt or your bed clothes, you can dye, you can bleach your bed clothes and dyes. Peroxides have a bleaching property. I wasn't sure what you were saying about intravenous uh, hydrogen peroxide, though. I, I know it's used to uh, well, for uh, for pneumonia and such. Uh, it's been reported to benefit. Uh, patients who have pneumonia to reduce uh, to as an antibacterial. Uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say, though. So hang tight, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. All right, we're back on The Bright Side talking to David in Oklahoma about, uh, about IV, IV hydrogen peroxide used as an antibacterial. Uh, it also can help dissolve cholesterol, although, you know, when every t anytime you stick something right in your veins, you got to be very careful, and there's, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't be messing around with H2O2 uh, intravenous. Did you have anything you want to add to that, David? Um, the, the name of the guy that wrote the book is uh, Conrad Lebu. Have you ever heard that name? I haven't. What's the name of the book? Uh, it's called uh, Hydrogen Peroxide and Ozone. It's uh, in its, uh, this, this one that I have right here, it's in its 13th edition. It's, uh, it's a little pamphlet, but it's not really a big spell book. This, spell this guy's name. Um, Conrad, and then uh, it's uh, Libu, it's L-E-B-E-A-U, and um, you should be able to find it. I'm going to look him up. Sure. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look him up. Because, but you know, it, H, hydrogen it, peroxide is made by the body, so it's not like it's an a, absolute poison, but it is pretty powerful stuff, and putting right in the veins is something, I don't know, I, I would think long and hard before I stuck it in my veins. Although, as I say, it has been used as an antibacterial and also um, to help dissolve cholesterol plaques and calcium deposits. Uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I haven't. I've never used it, I mean, intravenously, but I was uh, using the uh, pharmaceutical uh, one. With, uh, you mix it in with water, and you drink it down. And, How, uh, what percent were you doing? Do you know what percent you were doing? Um, it's a, uh, I think it was a nine, I think it was. Nine percent. Here's a little tip for you if you want to use it, and for anybody out there listening who wants to use hydrogen peroxide perhaps as a tooth whitener or as a, a anti-infective for your ears, uh, or if you, for whatever reason, for, like you say, for, uh, helped your dogs uh, for rashes and such, 
I get um, mm -hmm. 35% food grade uh, hydrogen peroxide and then dilute it down to 10% or 12%. And uh, it's a lot right. cheaper that way. And you can make your own. Use distilled water and uh, keep it. You don't need to keep it in the fridge or anything because hydrogen peroxide is a preservative. Uh, but you can, you know, a, a four ounce bottle of this stuff, if you cut, if you dilute it, can be pretty inexpensive. I use it as a tooth whitener, actually. Right. Uh, according to this book, though, right here, it says it's supposed to go ahead. I'm not going to say it's cures, but it shows over here arthritis, emphysema. Uh, yeah, I've symptoms. heard that. I've heard that. I'm not, sh I'm not necessarily. Look, if you have any of these kinds of issues, you can treat it medicinally, and that's what you're talking about here by using hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. but, but arthritis is not a hydrogen peroxide deficiency. And that's really why I very rarely will talk about medications uh, as far as therapy goes, medications on this program. Because to me, if you have arthritis, you have a degenerative, any kind of degenerative health issue, you've got a nutritional problem, you've got a digestive problem, you've got a blood sugar problem, and then you've got a, a oxygen and toxicity issue. And these are really the primal areas that you want to work on. Medicinally, yeah, maybe to get rid of symptoms if you're in miserable pain. But as far as reversing and really taking care of these kinds of health issues, think nutrition, think supplements, think stabilizing blood sugar and working on the digestive system, detoxification, and that includes sugar, and then also uh, respiration and oxygenation. Hope that helps. Anything else Thank you want to you, add? Ben. Okay, cool. God bless. Um, Have a beautiful... Yeah? Anything else, David? Thank you. All right, take care, man. All right, uh, Frank in Illinois, what's going on? Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, good morning. I just wanted to, I'll be as brief as I can. I've got uh, three teenagers, a 19-year-old girl, 18-year-old uh, son, um, and a 16-year-old son, and they suffer from acne, and uh, there's a couple of products that they tried using. There's one that's advertised on television quite a bit, and they, they claim Proactive? Uh, Are you talking about proactive? Yes, proactive, and they, they claim Are they that using? they really help well, of course not. That's the proactive is, it's just more silliness. It's benzoyl peroxide. If you really, really want proactive, just go to the drugstore and get benzoyl peroxide. It's the same stuff. Now they do put some herb in there, you know, to kind of make it more proprietary. But basically, you're looking at the standard acne medicine called benzoyl peroxide, which, by the way, is similar to hydrogen peroxide, except it's more fatty than hydrogen peroxide, which would make sense because it's being used to treat acne. Benzoyl peroxide is an extremely toxic substance in high concentration. Now, it's true that in proactive and in drugstores, you're only going to get 5% or 2.5% or maybe less. And in order to go into carcinogenicity, cancer causing, and benzoyl peroxide, you need like a 50% benzoyl peroxide. Nonetheless, benzoyl peroxide is a known cancer causing agent. Just Google benzoyl peroxide and cancer. Now, I know that you're only using 2% or 5% or low concentrations, but does, do you really want to put even 2% of a known carcinogen on your skin or on your kid's skin? No. Who came up with it? it? It's no. craziness. Here's the it deal. Is. Acne, like all skin diseases, is an internal condition, not a topical condition. Can you improve the, the appearance of, of acne-prone skin with benzoyl peroxide? Maybe. Can you improve the appearance with glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid? Maybe. But the problem is not in the skin. It's inside the body. For the, for the most part, you're looking at nutritional deficiencies in combination with digestive problems and occasionally hormone issues as well. So here's what you need to do for acne. We've, and you can also go back to the archives because we spent a lot of time talking about this a couple weeks ago. Number one, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate. Everybody with acne, really everybody needs 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, but especially if you have acne. You can induce acne in a laboratory animal simply by removing zinc out of the diet. Likewise, you can reverse acne or you can help, you can have dramatic healing properties for uh, healing effects on the skin by using 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. That's your go-to mineral for acne. A secondary right. mineral for acne is selenium. Uh, use the ultimate selenium, 200 to 400 micrograms a day. Those are probably your two most important minerals for acne. Your two most important vitamins for acne are vitamin A and vitamin C. In fact, vitamin A and vitamin C are the two most important vitamins for the skin in general, for anti-aging, uh, for oh, dark spots, for wrinkles, whatever. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just saying the vitamin A, the, uh, you know, I just kind of have an issue with a lot of it's a soy-based product. And it's I'm not really soy. There's no vitamin A in soy. I don't know where you're getting that from. Soy is an, oh, uh, vit okay. Vitamin A is an animal product. 
It's only oh. found in animals. There's no vitamin A in any plants. Now, plants will make vitamin A-like substances, retinoid substances, one in particular called beta-carotene, but that's not vitamin A. Let me say that again because there's a lot of misunderstanding. For, for A lot of folks are spreading this silliness and this just, just this crazy science that beta-carotene is vitamin A. Beta-carotene is not vitamin A. It has some vitamin A activity. It may be converted into vitamin A if you're healthy and strong, but it's not vitamin A. Vitamin A is only made by animals for animals. Look, I don't like eating meat, and, and I, don't like, I don't eat a lot of meat, and I'm not a big believer in eating a lot of animal products. But you know what? You're not going to get vitamin A unless you're eating an animal. Whether it's dairy or whether it's organ meats or whether it's fish or whatever, that's the only way you're going to get vitamin A. Likewise, vitamin D. Although you can get vitamin D from a, convert, a chemical reaction that occurs from the sun, in terms of food-based, you're not going to get vitamin D except from, from an animal. Mushrooms are an exception. Mushrooms are a very interesting exception because mushrooms are kind of, they're a fungus, which is sort of like a cross between a plant and an animal. Any case, vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, must have for acne. Vitamin C, 5,000 milligrams a day or anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day for acne. You can also do dramatic things topically with retinol, which is vitamin A, and also vitamin C. Head over to truthtreatments.com, get the retinol gel applied very sparingly to blemishes. It is a topical treatment, but because it's a vitamin, you're going to get healing properties that you're not going to get from benzoyl peroxide. I'm not telling you that you're going to cure acne topically with retinol, but you can get some wonderful healing, anti-pigmentation, and also blemish reduction benefits by using topical retinol. Head over to truthtreatments.com. If you want retinol, there's also 25% vitamin C in my retinol gel. So it's a combination of vitamin C in its fatty form, in its premium form, along with retinol. Other nutrients, internal nutri or other nutritional strategies or dietary strategies include taking care of the digestive system. Use probiotics, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, uh, also digestive enzymes after meals, apple cider vinegar after meals. If you can link the breakouts to foods, you can eliminate those foods. That also will be, can be helpful. And then acne for many years was called skin diabetes. That's because, yeah, interestingly, they used to use diabe diabetic medication for acne. Why? Because there's a very important relationship between the inflammation that causes acne pimples and blood sugar and uh, problems with blood sugar uh, metabolism and insulin, uh, insulin production as well. So using all of your blood sugar stabilizing strategies can also be helpful for dealing with acne. And now, recently, there's, uh, there's been some literature talking about Lack of oxygen inside the follicle leading to an inflammatory condition that can cause acne. That lack of oxygen can be caused by problems with breathing or inflammation or, uh, or uh, uh, circulatory problems as well. So keeping the blood circulating, exercise, getting on a, getting on a, uh, a, a rebounder can help. All kinds of strategies. Of course, deep breathing techniques can also be helpful too. Thanks for your call, Frank. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you out. Nobody has to deal with acne. Nobody has to deal with dry skin. Nobody has to deal with any health challenge, folks. It's not a medical model. It's not a medical model problem. It's a lifestyle problem. That's what we're all about here on the Bright Side. Empowerment, taking care of our health conditions ourselves. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.